In this video will cover code reading on the CVX. We'll start out with the 2D code reading and then it will end with 1D code reading. They're both very similar tools to set up. And so I will start, we're going to add a tool. You can find the 1D and 2D code reading in the identification category. We'll choose 2D code. Now for setting your region, it just needs to be larger than the 2D code. If your 2D code could move at all, then you want to make it a little bit larger. Um, if it's going to be very stable and in the same spot, you could make it smaller. But the whole code has to be inside of the region. So now the first thing you have to do is specify the code type. These are the list of codes that we can read. So this is a QR code. And now it is going to auto-tune and set target parameters. As you can see, it has read the code. You can tell it's successful when it outlines the code in green. This up here, the read data, is what that code is reading. You can also see that down here, in the read data. So let's go into some of the detection conditions to further set up the tool. Once again, you can see all of the code types. Here is the auto tuning button. We don't need to click that again, but right here where my mouse is, you can see that it has auto filled these categories. These are the detections that it found on the auto tune. Now you can manually set them and I'll go through what each of these mean. The code resolution is the number of pixels per cell. So you can see it's found 6.43 in this image. The reference contrast is the contrast from the code to the background. I have a very good contrast. If there is a lower contrast, you will want to select low or lowest. The number of cells is just the number of cells in the code. For this QR code, it's 21 by 21. The code color, you can choose black, white, or both. Mirrored reading shows standard. You can choose the mirrored code to be read or both. Um, I just have standard, so I don't need to choose the mirrored. And the base angle is just specifying the angle of the 2D code that was auto-tuned. Next on these options down here is the angle range automatically set at plus or minus 180. This just means that we will be able to read the code at any orientation as long as it is inside of the region. Then there is the scale variation, which is a tolerable size variation that it can still detect. It can go from small, which is plus or minus 10% of the size, to unlimited, which is any readable size is allowed and will be read as a code. And then there is the timeout, which is the processing time limit that this tool will set on how long it takes to find a code. So by default, if it takes three seconds to find a code, instead it will give a timeout error. The next settings are the read data settings. In here, you can choose the digit that you start with. Um, it's pretty clear what the code is reading because the text is on the image, but you can choose at any digit. The read data length is going to be default 100, but I'm gonna change mine to seven because that is how many characters are in this. The split data option can split portions of the read code data and output that data. So if you go into split settings, for example, I could choose to just read CV on the first split range, and on the second, I could choose to just read X100. If you have a very long code and you only wanna read a specific part of it, I recommend using the split data, but we don't need to use that for this. You can output a fixed length so if I wanted to output seven characters every single time, I could check this box and choose what character I wanted to output if it only read six. By default, it chooses an underscore, but you can choose that based on whatever your application is. 
And then this call text at read error, you can choose a text to be output if it does not read a code. By default, it is error, but you can choose whatever text you would like. In the action two protocols, it's the output symbol identifier, just adds a three byte symbol identifier to the top of read data. And the extended channel interpretation outputs ECI after reading a code incorporating extended channel interpretation. It does not affect reading a code where that is not incorporated. The next on verification, this is a relative verification of the red 2D code according to the marking quality evaluation specified by a third party institution. And these are the options for the verification. We're going to leave that off. And then last, you have the judgment conditions. So you can choose the condition, which could be if you were to choose multiple, you can actually add multiple codes and this will let you know which code it has read. You can do up to 16 codes on this condition list. We're going to go with single because we're just looking for one code here. So now you can see the read data is CVX 100. We can choose either to type in any reference pattern, which means that's the pattern it's looking for, and if it reads something else, it will fail. You can choose a date and time, or you can just copy from the read data, and the reference pattern will become what the current code has read. And then some other judgment conditions is the length. So if I wanted to make sure that I had seven characters, I could set our upper and lower limits to seven. You can choose the position and angle. So the X, Y, and angle can all be set if you only want the code to be in a specific location. If the code is fine anywhere in the image, then you don't have to worry about any of these conditions. So now that I have all of these settings, we can start triggering through some images. As you can see, that is failing because the read data does not match the reference pattern. Same with this one, and same with this one, but you can see that it is utilizing the angle range. It is almost completely upside down, but it is still reading that code. And now we are back to our Reference pattern is CVX100 this is an OK part. So now I'll show the 1D code reader. It's very similar to the 2D code reader that I just showed. So as you can see, I already have the tool in here and it's already reading a code. It's reading the data CVX100R and that is our reference pattern. If I trigger through, you can see them failing because they don't match the reference pattern. So if we go into the edit, you can see the type of codes, the 1D codes that the CVX can read. It says the auto-tune and the same conditions as the 2D code reader. There's the read data settings as well as the verification and the same judgment conditions as the 2D code reading. So as you can see, the 1D and 2D code readers are both very simple. There's a wide variety of codes that the CVX can read at any angle range. They, have, they can only read one code per region, but you can set up multiple code reading tools per program if there were multiple codes in one image.